With Senate Bill 202, Georgia will take another step toward ensuring our elections are secure, accessible, and fair. Tonight, we're following breaking election news in Georgia. Governor Kemp signed a sweeping Republican-backed bill to update the state election system. Among other things, it adds new restrictions on absentee voting and greater control from the state legislature over how elections are run. Ashlyn Webb has followed this bill and joins us live from the Bibb Board of Elections tonight. And Ashlyn, how does it impact local election systems? Good evening, Lori. The law is nearly 100 pages long and covers, like you said, uh, requiring IDs for absentee voters and criminalizes giving food to voters. But it also could take away autonomy from local county board of elections, including here in Macon Bibb County. The law gives the state elections board broad powers, such as letting them replace local election officials. It'll also give the state power to take over local election boards if the state determines they're underperforming. Representative Barry Fleming said on the House floor Thursday that the state intervention would mirror the oversight for school systems. If there is a school system, for example, that's about to lose their accreditation and their kids can't even get into college with the diplomas from that school system, there are provisions in our law where after due process and, cer due process and certain hearings, changes can be made to help those school systems get back on track. It is a temporary uh, fix, so to speak. According to the law, the state elections board can suspend up to four local election board superintendents at a time. The law says the state would temporarily replace the local board with a single appointee to run county elections. I'm less concerned about the party affiliation and more concerned about the micromanaging and the uh, without our input. Mayor Pro Tem Seth Clark proposed a resolution in Megan Bibb County's commission on Tuesday, asking the local delegation to strip that portion of the bill and also asking the governor to veto the bill. An amended version passed committee seven to two. There are anti-democratic measures as far as curbing voter access, but the main thing that, sh that, that concerns us as a board and concerns uh, that, sh that I, I think the citizens should be concerned about is it takes the voice of their elected representatives out of the process. Macon Bibb County Board of Elections Chairman Mike Kaplan says he does not believe the law is aimed to take away autonomy from local boards, but to address problems that occurred in some counties. I hope it has to be something fairly serious as opposed to something innocuous, like they just don't like the results of an election. And the law will also take away the Secretary of State's role as the state board elect or the state election board's chair. Um, and instead, the legislature legislature currently controlled by Republicans would fill that position. That's significant because the state board of elections actually investigates complaints into board of elections. Reporting live in Macon, Ashlyn Webb, 13 W Maisie News. Thank you, Ashlyn. After the governor signed the bill, Secretary of State Brad Raffensperger said in a statement to 13 WMAZ, quote, in implementing this law, I will ensure that no eligible Georgia voter is hindered in exercising their right to vote, and I will continue to further secure our elections so that every Georgian can have confidence in the results of our elections. We spoke to Central Georgia lawmakers about the law. Republicans say this is much needed reform, while Democrats have called it another way to suppress the vote. We all must have confidence in our election system, and I don't think anything that has been done is unreasonable. The idea that we are suppressing the vote is just uh, not, not accurate, and I am very proud of the bill that was produced and very proud to have voted for it. If we ever want to get past these type of draconian uh, laws, then the people are going to have to really come back to the polls and make sure that they are making the changes that need to be made. We're taking a closer look at what else the law includes. It requires an ID number, like a driver's license, to apply for an absentee ballot. It cuts off absentee ballot applications 11 days before an election and limits the number of absentee ballot drop boxes. As Ashland said, it also allows the state to take control of what it calls underperforming local election systems and disallows volunteers from giving away food and drink to voters waiting in lines. Many Democrats and voting rights groups challenged parts of the original bill throughout the process. As a result, plans to eliminate no-excuse absentee voting and restricting weekend voting were struck down as this version passed the House. The law actually now expands weekend voting. 